Coming from Kent, my architectural upbringing consisted of Tudor brick, thatched cottages and nothing over three storeys. Materials like concrete and steel were reserved for agricultural buildings. Moving to London in the 80s, I was instantly drawn to post-war brutalism, my favourite example being the Economist Building, now rechristened the Smithson Building, after its architects, Alison and Peter Smithson. When completed, it was an exemplar of how to integrate a substantial new set of buildings into this important historic site of St James's. It has been the subject of many an architectural thesis, the backdrop to the iconic 60s film Blow Up, and it housed the Architecture Foundation's gallery in the basement. I've got great memories of taking refuge on the piazza from the often overheated venue with my pals, feeling we were so privileged to be in one of the finest urban settings, drinking half-decent wine. More recently, the Economist had to sell its special home in order to maintain the magazine's independence. The new owners appointed another husband and wife team, Deborah Saunt and David Hills, to sensitively restore this national treasure. The development comprises three towers of varying heights surrounding a raised piazza. These buildings share the same facade treatment of large glass panels framed within the Roche bed stone. This stone cladding is of special importance and the reason why the development has attracted visits from both architects and geologists to admire this architecture and also scrutinise these wonderful slabs of shell-pitted dirty white stone. Roach bed Portland stone is a type of limestone which has formed slowly over 150 million years from the seabeds of the Jurassic coast. Portland stone has been used since Roman times for a desired effect of grandeur as seen in regal, civil and commemorative architecture such as the Bank of England and the Cenotaph. Roach bed is the top layer of Portland stone and has a unique grain and texture. It is better known as a decorative stone. Its surface of cavities from vanished shells makes it almost impossible to cut consistent blocks of similar texture something that clearly appealed to the Smithsons. There is no definitive evidence for the choice of this stone, no doubt the contrast of this rough, shelly material against smooth glass was an attraction. It is more likely, however, that the decision was underpinned from their desire to achieve a more natural, expressive form to humanise the building in its urban setting. Accurate or not, it does it for me. In my formative years, the beauty of this architecture and the textual quality and form of this very special material has provided me with a connection to another time and space. So thank you to the Smithsons for introducing me to Roche Bedstone, this ancient wonder of nature. <laughs>